Uh, as already indicated, I'm here representing uh, my colleague, the Minister of uh, Environment, uh, Water and Climate, uh, uh, Honorable Kasukwere, uh, an important member uh, of the excellent work that uh, uh, you are all doing, who had to travel uh, last night to Senegal to attend a meeting there uh, on water. So I'm pleased uh, to make this statement for him. Um, uh, on behalf of His Excellency, uh, the President uh, uh, of uh, the Republic of Zimbabwe, uh, Comrade uh, Araje Mugabe, uh, and the government of Zimbabwe, as well as the people of Zimbabwe, I'm happy to welcome you all uh, to our country in general, and Harare in particular. I don't know uh, if there are any who are visiting, any of you who are visiting our country for the first time, whether I should apologize that we are in Harare and not Victoria Falls but others were in Victoria Falls uh, the first time round. Uh, I hope that um, during your, your stay, since your arrival, uh, you have been uh, uh, made uh, to feel welcome uh, and that you have not uh, suffered any undue inconvenience if you have suffered then we apologize and would be happy uh, to make uh, your stay better and please uh, don't uh, uh, hesitate or feel shy to bring anything to our attention which may be inconveniencing you. Um, otherwise I uh, would like to thank the WMO, uh, through you, uh, Mr. Jaru, uh, and thank the African uh, Union Commission, uh, through you, uh, Mr. Olaide, for enabling this second AMCOT uh, Bureau meeting to take place uh, uh, in our country and uh, uh, here in Harare. Um, on our part, we pledge our fullest support, uh, specifically uh, to this meeting, but uh, uh, indeed to any positive initiatives that promote the development of our continent, uh, the betterment of our communities, and um, the pursuit of African endeavors, such as the Millennium Development Goals and the Hyogo Framework on Disasters. We are not only delighted uh, by your presence here, uh, but also uh, grateful that uh, your organizations have been um, able to provide assistance uh, notably financial assistance to, ena to enable the attendance by representatives of the countries in the Bureau. I wish, uh, Honorable Ministers, uh, to single out the presence of the delegation of the Central Africa uh, Republic, uh, which despite the political situation unfolding in that country, have been um, able to come to attend the Bureau meeting uh, we know uh, that in addition to the loss of life uh, and the attended uh, calamities uh, that um, uh, have occurred in that country, uh, there have also been uh, consequences on the meteorological observation stations in that country, uh, which um, uh, were closed and that also includes the weather monitoring equipment and the instruments that were stolen. Uh, therefore, 
uh, crippling that country's capacity to discharge its responsibility in this regard. We are even told that some records have disappeared. And as we all know, when you lose uh, uh, knowledge of the weather and climate, uh, it is uh, like uh, the second law of en uh, uh, thermodynamics, like entropy. It, you can't recover once it is gone. It's unrecoverable. But of course, this uh, unfortunate situation is not only unique to the Central African Republic. Uh, we, are, we understand uh, similar ex experiences in varying degrees have occurred uh, in Libya, uh, Mali, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, for example. Uh, uh, this situation, uh, uh, honorable ministers, uh, presents uh, a, a challenge uh, to AMCOT. Uh, and um, uh, I should uh, say and uh, do so in the form of a plea uh, or a request to you, uh, Secretary General, uh, that uh, it would be useful if uh, WMO uh, takes the, uh, this situation uh, on board uh, and that uh, it be presented at the next session of uh, AMCOT with a view to finding a solution, a view to finding a way uh, of uh, uh, addressing uh, the problem uh, because, uh, as we all know, uh, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Uh, this is particularly so uh, when it comes to matters meteorological because the weather affects uh, us uh, without exception and uh, if there is no preparedness in one area, that lack of uh, preparedness, especially if it is on account of uh, lack of uh, or having non-functioning uh, meteorological observation stations or lack of uh, weather monitoring equipment and instruments and so forth, then of course it affects the rest of us. Uh, and it is uh, uh, important that uh, we attend to the situation in a collective manner. Uh, Honorable Ministers, uh, as uh, we meet, we face a daunting task because now more than ever before, weather and climate issues have taken center stage at all national, regional, and international uh, fora. For instance, we are now failing to cope with uh, uh, increases and intensity of severe weather events uh, and uh, extreme climate conditions. Our continent is highly vulnerable to natural disasters, particularly floods, droughts, sandstorms, and uh, mudslides. Here in Zimbabwe, uh, we recently experienced uh, unusual floods in the just uh, ended uh, rainy season. Of course, we're very happy that uh, uh, the heavens opened up uh, and uh, we had um, mm -hmm. a very good, uh, a very good rainfall uh, season. And uh, as a farming country, uh, we always say uh, uh, it's better to be hungry when you have a lot of water uh, than uh, uh, the opposite. But in this case, uh, uh, the good rains came with uh, consequences. Uh, which we are still uh, uh, grappling with. Elsewhere, usable surface and underground water sources are drying up. Within our countries, which are primarily agricultural and rain fed, uh, calls for increasing uh, from our citizens and colleagues in government for accurate, uh, reliable, uh, and uh, timely early warning weather and climate information and forecasts which impact directly onto their mandate, mandates and operations are being made. This includes attending to the needs for climate change adaptation and mitigation. 
In the next two days, uh, Honorable Ministers, we will be focusing on the reports by the chairpersons of the task forces on the constitution and rules of procedure, the feasibility of the African Space Weather Program, and the implementation of the integrated strategy on meteorology, weather, and climate. In addition, we will get an update on the progress of the consultations of the Regional Climate Center for Central Africa. Uh, these uh, as per the decisions of the second uh, ordinary session of uh, uh, AMCOMET in Victoria Falls uh, in October 2012, and um, as per the African Union heads of state and government at their summit in uh, January 2013. Uh, the next session of, AM of uh, AMCOMET, uh, due to take place later this year, and uh, uh, next, uh, the next summit of uh, the African Union due to take place in January 2015 will, honorable ministers, require uh, a report from us. Therefore, as there are many issues to attend, uh, and uh, as we look forward to the deliberations uh, uh, of uh, this uh, meeting, let me conclude by acknowledging the tremendous support rendered by WMO and the AU to AMCOMET, including uh, indeed to the Bureau. We are very much aware of the scarcity of the resources, hence the need for self-reliance and more commitment from all of us. Let us urge the AMCOMET membership to use all means available to mobilize resources internally as donor dependence has its usual consequences. I'm positive, uh, honorable ministers, that this call will be heeded as the winds of positive change are now taking place in Africa, uh, especially on the economic front. Let us take this opportunity to fulfill the objectives of uh, AMCOMET, particularly preparing the ground for the launch of an African meteorological satellite. It is now, honorable ministers, uh, uh, secretary general, uh, my honor and uh, privilege uh, on behalf of uh, my colleague who is away to declare this second meeting of the Bureau of uh, AMCOMED officially opened. I thank you.